What's up, son? This just got interesting. So as promised, I'm going to go over the overclocking for the RX 580. But more, we're going to redirect this to what overclocking the RX 580 can do for you. And essentially, that's beat the fuck out of the most expensive GTX 1060 on the market right now. Or at least one of the most expensive from EVGA, the For the Win edition. Yeah. And this isn't even in games that are normally like games where you see the RX 480 slash 580 beat the GTX 1060 6 gigabyte. These are in two of the most popular games where Nvidia has been proven to beat the RX 580 with their GTX 1060 6 gigabyte and even in some cases have been beating it with the RX or sorry with the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte model. Starting things off, let's talk about drivers. There was a new driver update since I last tested the RX 580 in these games, and it's 17.6.1. The only issue here is that for some reason the GPU usage is only showing 16% in that top corner when you check out the side-by-sides of usage, but I can verify that we are using 100% and once you start seeing the frame rate numbers, I think you'll agree. The NVIDIA driver is also updated as well and it is going to be the driver 382.53. This one was released on January 9th, 2017. So yes, that is actually today. Well, tomorrow it's 12.23 a.m., but for all my testing, yes, I've spent quite a few hours testing the GTX 1066 gigabyte to verify all of my numbers. The games are also patched up to their latest current versions and there have been a lot of changes to both Prey and Mass Effect Andromeda, which are the ones we're going to be taking a look at. The test bench is an i7-7700K overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz as to allow for the least amount of CPU boundness issues that we might see. The rest of the details will be in the description below. So, of course, we have to talk about the elephant in the room, the overclocking of the RX 580. It is the wonderful Gigabyte Aorus GTA or RX 580 8-gigabyte model, and it is a pretty expensive model, but it's well worth it if you're trying to push your RX 580 as far as it can go, and you don't want to be concerned with maybe not hitting the lotto, or maybe, you know, not having enough power because this one does provide... Ooh, <sighs> An extra six pin there. Yeah. Now that is going to be pretty beefy and it's going to start pulling quite a few watts. More around 250 to 300 watts when you're overclocked here. Because I didn't want to limit myself anywhere there was. I did turn up the voltage all plus 96 millivolts. Yeah. So pretty high. And then I put the power limit all the way up. And standard, pretty standard stuff. I did knock the voltage down just a tad in Afterburner just to make sure that we, because I did get a little artifacting. And then we went ahead and started overclocking. Now, with the overclock, the card actually will go up to 1565. The caveat to that is that you're going to start running into artifacts and benchmarking runs. And that's no bueno for me. So I turned it down to the most reasonable setting that I could find that was very solid, ran a lot of, of the Firestrike stress test, and we settled at 1510, which is a pretty good overclock. The memory went to 2250, so the max slider on MSI Afterburner with no issues, and it all came out pretty solid. You guys can see here that we had some pretty good bumps in both Fire Strike and Time Spy, and that's pretty impressive. But where we're really concerned here is the real world, real world, the real world gaming. There we go. And the two games that I decided to test were two of the games that I saw maybe had the most promise for AMD coming ahead. Prey, because Prey does have the AMD logo at the beginning of the game, so I was like, why is it not winning yet? And then, of course, Mass Effect Andromeda, where in our previous RX 580 test, when we initially did the review, which you can watch here... We saw that it was getting very, very close to NVIDIA or the GTX 1066 gigabyte. 
And wowzers, fellas, I do have to say, I did not overclock the GTX 1060 for the win edition, but it was running pretty heftily, and I did pull those MSI sliders all the way to the power limit maxed and the temp limit maxed as to not limit the card, or it's already pretty hefty, nice GPU boost 3.0. So that is something to note, is that one of the nice things is that or for NVIDIA is GPUs, GPU Boost 3.0 functions very well and gets you very high clocks very easily without you having to touch anything. In this example, you're looking at over 2000 megahertz in overclock while the For the Wind Edition will get up to about 2100. It won't go really above that very solidly without some throttling, but you will see here that we're hitting sometimes at 2025. So on a normal GTX 1066 gigabyte, the GPU boost is gonna be around 1900. So the For the Wind Edition is definitely showing uh, quite a bit of brute force there all by itself. But to the numbers, let's go ahead and talk about the numbers. I think I wanna start with Prey because Prey was a point of, um, a point of contention or argument or disagreement between NVIDIA fans and AMD fans alike. A lot of the problem was that there was this weird stutter going on when the game initially released that was causing some issues with NVIDIA users, yet the benchmarks were looking really, really good. Now, whether this is something NVIDIA was intentionally doing with their drivers to get good day one results on benchmarks alone, or if it was just an oversight on their part, regardless, it definitely required some retesting. And I did want to make sure that we went ahead and this is our third time retesting it. And at this point, we did see a nice drop. And I say a nice drop, obviously not a very nice drop. But with that drop, we did see the removal of that micro stutter. With these settings and uh, pretty much we just turned the stock very high settings on for Prey and it's at 1080p. We saw that the GTX 1060 had a minimum of 82 with an average of 113.35 and a max of 152. And here's where things get impressive. The overclocked RX 580 8GB comes in two frames ahead on the minimum with 84. It comes pretty much almost 10% ahead in frames on average with 121.5 and a max matching at 152. Making the obvious statement here is that in this situation, if you are comparing these cards, the RX 580 is going to have a much smoother experience and at very high settings in Prey, we'll be pushing a 120 hertz 1080p panel quite well. Pretty crazy, there you go. This is the first time in my testing, and like I said, this is my third retest officially on the channel, probably fourth or fifth personally outside of the channel, and I finally am seeing AMD coming out with the win. And of course, like I said, what should have been from the beginning an AMD title yet. I'm not sure if that was only for Ryzen or if that was for Ryzen and Radeon. I know they've made that distinct split and that could be the case there. But either way, we did see it losing to NVIDIA, the GTX 1063 gigabyte and 6 gigabyte and on initial release to where now we see the RX 580, of course, while overclocked, beating it out. Are you ready for the crazy, crazy news here though? Mass Effect Andromeda at ultra settings in 1080p with the previous mentioned overclocks on both cards. The GTX 1060, wait for it, had a minimum of 53, an average of 60.5, and a max of 72. Coming out with the exact same minimum frame rate of 53 is the RX 580 wall overclocked, and winning with an average of 62.23, and winning with a max of 73 in Mass Effect Andromeda. These numbers are super, super close and within margin of error, but what I can tell you 
is that the RX 580 uh, on paper is winning here and not only that the RX 580 is playing just as smooth with all of the exact same ultra settings in a game where when it initially released it was getting absolutely demolished by the GTX 1066 gigabyte. So pretty cool stuff I thought. I hope you guys enjoyed it and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below and please stay tuned and hit the bell because obviously I'm not popping up in everybody's uh, sub boxes apparently here. So if you have forgotten to hit that notification button, please do so. That helps me out a lot. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it, learned something about it, or you're able to go post this on whatever opposing subreddit to get me a whole bunch of dislikes because you're a fucking asshole. Anyways, until next time, I'll see you next Tuesday.